And then it's time for the second talk of the afternoon session. This is Vanda Rajudhi, and she's going to talk about pruning vineyards. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, thank you for the organizer for accepting my contribution. I'm going to talk about pruning vineyards. So, updating barcode by removing synthesis. This is a joint work with Yannick Lazowski. But unfortunately for you, the organizer didn't pay for the premium version. So, I'm going to start first with some advertising. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So Donut is a database that I'm working on since 2018 with Yanni Lazowski's and now a great addition of uh, Bastian Rieck and Yossi Blair. And this is a database of application of TDA. So you can see that we are over 400 applications. All of them are targeted by the area in which they, they use it, the mathematical tools, the input type, and where are 400? If you see something missing, and you probably will, please complete the form here. We're going to happy to update. So if you need to search for a specific type of application, this is, this is a resource for you. OK, that's it. Now I can actually talk about the math. So let's say that we have this setting, which is I have a bunch of points in Rn. This picture is, of course, in R2. And these points are moving according to some dynamics. So for example, they are moving along these lines. And I want to perform some precision homology over it. So I'm making the standard things, which is the torus strips or a check complex. And I'm just making a, a radius, a ball of uh, centering them growing. What I will get is a filtration that in this case looks something like this. At a certain point, all the three balls interact. So I'm gonna put a triangle to get. But now let's see that my points moves a little, and I would like not to recompute everything. So they move a little, just a tiny bit, and let's say that I cannot make my balls grow more, so I actually lose one edge, and with that I use the, lose the triangle. But I already did all the computation before, I don't want to do the computation again. Possibly these are a lot of points. So the idea is that I'm gonna be given a filtration and a reduced matrix. And what I want to do is I want to say, OK, let's just remove one simplex and everything, all the co faces, of course. And what I want to do is I want to find a quick way to just update the matrix by removing some column. Of course, I cannot just remove some columns. I need to do some operation over it. So uh, the stars here is just the star of um, a simplex inside a filtration. You are not going to see this symbol again, it's just for being mathematically precise. Before actually going into the details of what we did, the idea of I have a filtration, I want to modify it a little, I don't want to do the recomputation again, is of course not new. Uh, the first, I think, appears in this paper. And there, what they did, they were not really handling the removal of a simplex, but they were uh, handling the switching of order. Because, of course, different order means a different barcode. But instead of recomputing everything, they did it in linear time. Um, more recently, there is some amazing work from Sam, or the organizer, actually. Uh, what they work is, is with zigzag, so not exactly filtration, but you can go back and uh, forward and backward. And what they have is they have, uh, this is the first paper, actually, of a series, so there are another two. Um, what they do is they update the barcode of the zigzag. Um, so technically, since they are using filtrations, zigzag, zigzag filtration, a simple filtration is a special case. So you could use their algorithm for what we are doing. It's not as efficient as it should <laughs> because they are dealing a much more general case and we are dealing a very specific one. So we should be faster in the very specific things. Okay, But if you have a zigzag, look at that. Um, even more recently, there is another work that is doing basically the same. Uh, of, of the previous one, just more efficiently. They do removal of synthesis, but only if they are at the end of the matrix. So where they don't impact on everything else. Uh, what we want to do is end on the situation in which we don't know necessarily where the syntax is. So let me set a little bit the notation. I'm going to have a matrix, and I want to be on zeta 2 because computation is easy. It's not so important. And I'm going to use the square bracket to denote the ice columns of it. 
The pivot is the row index of the lowest and non-zero entry. And the whole idea is I want to do some, some operation, which is a left to right column addition. So instead of having the column I, I now have the column I plus J where J was before. Why do I want to do that? Because the matrix reduction is the process of getting unique pivot. Unique, uh, so there is a row that is a pivot of only one column. Uh, and I want to do that, and I want to do it only on left to right column addition. The reason behind this is that when I do this, I obtain what is called a pivot pairing. So a pair of the pivot with the column of it. And this pivot pairing is telling me the barcode. So the entrance time of the simplex in the row is the starting point of my interval. The entrance time of the column, of the simplex associated to the column is the one, the simplex that kills the interval. Uh, this is a definition that we will need later on. It's pretty intuitive. A zeroed out column is the column that reduced to zero. So I'm doing a series of operation and at the end of that column is just a zero. The matrix V, again, I, use, I need an annotation, is the matrix encoding all these operations. So you can see as, uh, or classically what you see is that the reducer matrix is obtained by the initial matrix multiplying by this uh, matrix V. Finally, this is the last symbol, but from now on, many more examples. Uh, these symbols denote the submatrix, the lower left submatrix, which is the one given by the first, uh, the first bullet column and the last uh, star row. The reason why it is important is gonna be clear in a moment. Now, I promise you that I want to do something. This is conquer, I need to give you an algorithm, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna have as an input is a reduced boundary matrix. So the one that I can really have the barcode on. I also need to have a V, so the column operation that I did, which means I need to have the cycle representative of it. And then I need the simplex tau, which is the one that I want to remove. So what I'm doing is I'm checking all the times, all the column to which I add the tau, I add it back, so I remove it because I'm on zeta two. And then I simply remove any trace of tau because now it's no longer impacting anything else. And I call the standard reduction algorithm. You may think that this algorithm is very naive. It is because the only things that he's doing is reversing the operation that the reduction did and then reducing again. Wait on. Um, let me just give you an intuition of why this work. The idea of the pivot pairing uh, of Ernest Brunner and Harald, it was the so-called pairing lemma that is telling you that you have a pivot pairing if and only if the certain, the, the alternative sum of certain sum matrices or the rank of certain sum matrices is one. Okay, so basically the only thing, so this corollary is a corollary of that lemma and it's telling you that every operation you do that preserve this lower length uh, the rank of these lower left matrices is a valid barcode algorithm. So you don't actually need to do left to right column operation. You can do whatever you want, as long as you preserve that those ranks. So that's the idea. Examples. I have a filtration, four points, four edges, good. I have a boundary matrix out of it. And then what I do is I reduce it. You can see that these lower, uh, actually, if I do this, the people online don't see me. So if if you do, if you see this row is, is the pivot of too many columns, that's not unique, that's not good, so I'm gonna reduce it. The reduction is what you can see on the screen now, and I left the column addition that I did instead of encoding it to be just for you know purposes of making you understand better. Okay. But now, magically, someone tell me that they need to remove a simplex. I need to remove an edge, that edge over there. So the filtration changed accordingly, but I don't have the reduced matrix of it. So I'm just gonna follow the algorithm that I presented you. I add back tau, which in this case is AD, AD, to all the columns that already have it, like this one and this one. 
Now I'm in a situation in which tau, so AD was not impacting. I can simply remove it. I have a not reduced column uh, matrix that I need to reduce. I do one column operation and now I'm done. I have a pivot pairing that is correct. Not good. Um, so if I actually compute this, what happened is that the worst case scenario is giving me by calling again the standard persistent algorithm over this matrix. So what is the advantage of performing this versus just recomputing everything from scratch? Um, there is not much in the worst case now, but the idea is that there are some simple efficiency trick that we can do. So let's first have an intuition of what is happening. Um, if the first column to which I need to add the tau, so the first column that I was touched by it was zero, then adding tau to it just means that now it's equal to tau. So what I could do is, so what I do is I first add a tau to that, and then I add tau to all the others, and then I need to reduce it, but now it means that I need to add it row one, which is equal to tau, back to all of them. So what I am practically doing is I simply skip re-adding and re-subtracting because I'm doing it twice. So the only things I need to do in this case is, okay, I add it to row one and exit. But this is a sort of a specific case. I'm asking that the first column that tau uh, interacted with is a zeroed out column. Actually, we don't need that to be the first. If tau is anywhere along the possible million of columns that I have, there is only one that is touched by tau and it's zero, I can swap this with the first one and use it. And the reason why I can swap it is because the swap operation, which is, um, which is an algorithm that has been formalized, I think, by students of Michael Kerber, and then uh, we use it in a subsequent paper. Uh, so the idea is that when you swap the two columns, they both have the same pivot, so the lowest element, which means that the rank of the corresponding lower left matrices is untouched. So you can swap that, don't change the pivot pairing, and now you can simply use the first one that it was zero. So now it is an efficiency trick, uh, this looks much bigger, but actually the only thing that is different is the if. So the else is exactly what was happening before. The if is just, if you have at least one column in your step that is zero, use that and exit. Almost, because we still need to update all the column operation that we, we had. It. So let me go back to the example. Uh, okay, so. This is a reduced filtration that we had. And the situation was, I want to remove AD. Okay. And you can see that at the end, I have a column that is zeroed out, okay, in which to which I added AD. So I first swap that, and then I add AD back. Now I can remove AD, and I'm already are in the situation in which is reduced almost. You can see that AD is still appearing here, which is not something that I want. So I still need to update V and remove that. But this is much less column operation to do. Okay. So um, actually, in a moment, I'm going to discuss if this is actually a worst case that sh should happen or we can expect to happen. But before going there, I wanted to give you an intuition of what is this swap operation doing. So let's say that I have this collection of points and edges. And now I'm adding a last edge. What is happening in this boundary map? <laughs> so I, I need that whatever, so I have that the pivot of this column, one of them is are the two vertices, sorry, one of, is one of the two vertices in there. But that is also a pivot of some other, of the, the, let's say that the pivot was this vertex. So this is the pivot also of this edge here. So I need to add this edge to this previous one. Doing this, what I'm doing is I'm counting this vertex once, this vertex twice, which means zero, 
and is vertex once again. So now I have a chain that goes from here to here. I keep doing it and then I'm pushing and then I have a chain from here to here, from here to here, etc. until I get to the last edge. And what I'm doing is I'm adding the only vertex that was already there. So now I added and removed all the vertices or I added twice all the vertices. So at the end, I have zero, which means that in the column or in the chain, um, sorry, in the V column of this, of this edge, I have all the other edges. Okay? The cycle rep so I have a cycle representative which is going through all the edges. Now, if I want to remove one other edge, what I can just do it is I can, I can imagine that this golden edge here now is simply, is simply the representative of everything but the last edge. So instead of using that edge that I remove it as a representative, I can go through this longer cycle. And of course it's not, it's longer, it's, it's not efficiency, so if I want to compute the minimal representative cycle, but it's still the geometric interpretive ones, correct. And also in the, uh, the algorithm that I presented now is just for removing one simplex, but it's actually sitting in a bigger algorithm that goes through all the co-faces uh, top-down in dimension. So, so it was just more confusing. Okay, so we did some experiment to figure it out what was, because I haven't implemented this, um, and Yanis didn't either, so there is no implementation yet. Uh, so the experiment that we did, we we wanted to count two things, and we use it fat, uh, the reduction number. So we wanted to count how many times a column is added to something else, which means how many times I need to undo this operation, and we wanted to check how many times a column that was added to something else it was actually added to something zeroed out. So how many times we can use the uh, efficient version. This is just a bunch of data set. Uh, let me go over them quickly. I have the Vietori strips, five data set from the roadmap paper. Alpha filtration, we generated with data set, um, five random sample over a cube and a Swiss roll, embedded in R3, I think, yes, R3. Um, and then we took um, 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 80,000, 160,000 points out of it. We computed and count, counted over it. The lower cell filtration means uh, a cubicle complex of our images taken from the open scientific visualization data set. And then the last two are random filtration. The earlier training one, um, that is, I'm taking all the points with a random order, and then I'm taking the edges with a random order. And every time I have three edges that uh, form triangles, I put also the triangles in every higher clip. Shuffle filtration is as random as you can get. Random order on the vertices. Afterwards, random order on the vert on the edges. Afterwards, random order on the, on the triangle. It's just going up in dimension, so we are sure that is always a filtration. I'm not going to show you the result for all of them, but let me show you what happens if I'm counting the number of time a column was added to something else. So let's say that I use my, in the, in the previous example, I will have AD with number two, because I added to two following columns. Uh, the red line is the, the mean, simply how many times I have along vectors of all the columns, and I'm counting how many times the average of them. And the blue one is when I remove the column that they were never added to something else, uh, just to have a more correct picture. And up here, you can see the number of total columns that there are. Of course, it's not scaled because for this number, if, if I put something that is scaled properly with this number, this difference it goes just goes to zero. So flat, you cannot see. But the point is, um, there is only a small fraction of columns that I will over which I will need to run again the reduction. So removing a simplex without recomputing from scratch seems to be experimentally the best way. And then I have another interesting result. All the columns, all the experiments were added to a zero dot column. So for all the long list of input that you saw before, we can always use the optimization. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds so suspicious. 
And this is exactly what I thought. So I immediately went back to my account and tried to find a counterexample and the, and the counter counted it correctly. So it's, it was not a mistake of mine in the counter. It's just, it really happened. So the answer is yes, it is. This is extremely suspicious. I went back to my computation as any weird output should, uh, but it's also reasonable. And the reason why this is reasonable is that, so one as the intuition is that the more columns I have, and usually I want to have it in big data set, the more zero column I have, the more likely it is that something contributed to a zero column. And this is just probabilistic. I was not really satisfied by that. The other idea is that the point is I must never or almost never have higher homology. So for example, in a situation like this, if the center point is the one that enter last, okay, the column for a, the latest entering vertices, so the first entering edge is being added to all the other edges. And so that will have that will give me a higher number. But the moment in which I have one triangle there, I can immediately use it. So I need to have this weird looking situation in which there is something that he has to many things and there is no higher homology connected. So it, it makes sense that this is not really what happened. You need even something that you will not appear on a, on a persistent diagram, even something on the diagonal is still computed at this level as like a triangle. So if I feel this tiny end here, for example, this will briefly give me a one homology and it's already enough for me to use the efficiency yeah. uh, implementation. So that's why it's not really suspicious. Okay, I'm actually quicker than I thought. Uh, so what I want you to bring home is that it's possible to maintain the reduced matrix and it is possible to do it quite efficiently using this walk optimization. Um, so I think that the, there is yeah, extra things that you can bring home is that this idea of using other method of reduction, not just left, right column addition is really powerful. And so I, I would like people to think, to start to switching from left to right column addition to anything that preserves the rank of lower left submatrices, because that's, that's the only thing that really matters. And if you focus on optimizing uh, algorithm in that, from that point of view, maybe we can, we can do better, I don't know. Or that's my hope. And that's it. Thank you so much for the attention. Thank you, Barbara, for a very nice touch. Any questions? Yes. I had at least two. Um, so, um, can you, first of all, can you can you add these, can you insert these? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it time? Uh, I don't remember. So, the reason why we just want to do reduction is because there are a lot of plenty of people that knows more, more, much more than me and Yanis about computation. And they are working on, or they've been working. I think here they are doing even better. Yeah, I, I mean, swap trick though, so. I, ah, the swap trick. Uh, I haven't thought about, I mean, yes, so possibly. Okay, or, so well, you know, Kamal, Kamal is. Can I make a comp since you asked? Okay, uh, yeah. So our zigzag algorithm. Yeah. Can delete and insert in quadratic time. Okay. Now, yes. This oh, is yes, the so latest paper. It's on the archive. Mm -hmm. by, by you, by who, by, by her, by No, 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 by him. <laughs> they, <laughs> no. <laughs> they, wait, 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 what? The second one. Second one, but it is the new version, 2023. So there is another paper. So there are three papers on the archive with those two authors. And I'm telling you because I was only finding two and I couldn't find the third one. It was embarrassing. <laughs> So my second question is: Have you have you seen the paper tracking a generator by persistence, also by Kamal and Smirsu and Alexi Bustrev? So they use something called new operations. Uh, it uses the swap trick as well. For okay. Oh, uh, nice! I didn't break. know that. But okay, sorry. Long back. So. Okay. Yeah, it's, I just need to study all your paper at this point. Okay. It's, it's a hidden gem, though. Uh, and um, yeah, so I just I wanted to. Uh, 
We'll, we'll, yes, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Uh, so to answer your question, no, I haven't read the paper. Uh, I, I should talk, well, I can talk with you since here. I have a question. For yes. You. So your experimental part, so does it say that most of the ages participate in a cycle? Yes, yes. That's it, yeah, saying? that's, that's yeah, all, so actually all of the ones that I, that were in these samples, all of them, all the edges, uh, uh, I don't remember, I think I computed up to three dimensions. Anyway, all the edges participate in a cycle because even a triangle is a cycle. And so, yeah. So that's why your swap trick is a very nice trick. Exactly, exactly. That's it. More questions, yeah. So, so you can iterate this as well, like repeatedly throw away edges. And now if you wanted to then go back and reintroduce add edges, you would just kind of add them as a new edge because you yes. are throwing away the yes. information. Yes, well. exactly. But the point, so the the difficult part was, uh, so the if you don't, if you know for sure that you don't need to do it again, you, here this algorithm is is almost constant because the, the long part of this algorithm now is to implement, so it's remembering the column addition, so sorry, updating the column addition. So to have it, if you know for sure that you don't need it, this information anymore, so at the end, you only need the reduce. You don't need to do any operation of V. And so you just, it's very quick. You just swap in that. But we we don't know a priori. So the algorithm that we prepared was, okay, you give me as an input an R and a V, and I give you as an output an R and a V that are encoding all the information you may need. Well, suppose you know the simplex you are deleting does not have any coface. Does okay. it make any better? Uh, not these algorithm specifically, because this algorithm is only deleting everything that interact with it, so at the same dimension. But this is one part of the algorithm that run over the cofaces. Uh, so yes, that that would be much faster. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to take all the questions, but the. Uh, I, I'm also the last speaker of today, yeah. so I'm gonna. <laughs> You can insert, you can delete. What about uh, permutations? Do you rely on the vineyards for generic? For no, there is, as I, as I say, so there is, the third one is, is, is accelerating. So what they are doing in the third one is is inserting, uh, switching of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the order and deleting the one that are at the end. And they are doing, I mean, it's it's more than it's almost twenty years later than the Vinyas paper, so I assume they are. Sorry, I I I went through it, but I went mostly through the reduction part. <laughs> right. But they should be faster in yeah. both. So in the two operation that so the insertion and and swapping. Sure, but uh, but they compute at discrete steps, right? So vineyard simulate by a continuous origin, then you have yeah. Effect. Yeah, but also I mean. Also, us. I mean, when you when you are, I'm not sure I understand because when you are computing something, you always have this trick because computer can handle. Vineyards, you can actually you can take any you know, set of polynomial curves representing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, of course. Well, I don't see why this because in practice, once you have the implementation, you only need the entrance time, right? Uh, yes, but. Mm -hmm. Well, so I guess I uh, more Yeah, okay. More questions? Yes. Uh, you can remove uh, columns or rows uh, and then add the parkour, right? So what if, uh, if I want to remove high dimensional things like Oh, no, no, no. You, this, this algorithm doesn't, I, the example were two dimensional, but it's it's for any simplex in okay. any dimension. So, uh, how about numbers? If I want to remove any, uh, maybe two phase, maybe two. Yeah. Uh, you you just you just uh, run. Sorry, you can run this or actually in the better version, it should be more preferred. Uh, now tau is a iterator or whatever. So tau is the simplex you want to remove. So if you want to remove a triangle, tau is a triangle. If you want to remove uh, a whatever higher dimensional simplex, tau is just that higher dimensional simplex. So tau can be a set of 
Ah, no, sorry. No, for that, you will just simply run the algorithm more than once. Like for all the elements in your set, you will remove it. Yeah, these remove one and so in the in the full version, remove one and all the code phases. But basically, it's simply you have a set and you of synthesis top down in dimension to avoid double computation, and you just remove all of them. So yeah, you just apply this algorithm over for all the elements in your set of synthesis to remove. If you know some property of the set, it may be that you can do some trick. But in general, uh, you just have to run over it. Yeah. Right. Um, I think we'll stop here and uh, give up. Uh, I don't know if I'll see you again.